Uh, we got a good one today from the cannabis industry lawyer, the VA and PTSD. Somebody asked me the question, why doesn't the VA allow veterans to use cannabis and have that be covered by their VA benefits? I'm Tom, the cannabis industry lawyer, and we're going to answer that question today. I would like to thank whoever asked it on our Facebook page, your copy uh, the case of U.S. v. Yerba's is in the mail. It is the legal history of marijuana in America and why the case against marijuana should win and it should be ruled unconstitutional. But right now, let's not talk about that. Let's talk about the VA. So, currently, the VA has a policy about PTSD. Makes sense. A lot of veterans suffering from PTSD. And the number one thing that they say that you need to do is go to therapy really interesting it's the most effective thing before we even get to the pills now it's kind of weird that the most effective thing is not pills but a lot of pills are still prescribed again a little disclaimer here i want this disclaimer to be as disclaimed as possible i am not a doctor i have a juris doctor it means that i went to a law school i graduated from almost 10 years ago and i like to write books and i like to research the federal marijuana laws but I'm not even going to be a doctor on YouTube. Sorry if we do discuss some medical stuff. Number one, go to therapy, according to the VA's website, to treat your PTSD. After that, what are the actual drugs? The drugs are fairly common. People know of Zoloft, Paxil, Prozac. I haven't heard of Effexor, uh, but they're antidepressants. Now, these antidepressants are according to what is this thing called the VA slash DOD clinical practical guide for the management of post-traumatic stress disorder and acute symptoms and they go through 200 pages most recently updated in June of 2017 and they say if you're gonna do pharmaca pharmacotherapy pharmacotherapy yeah make sure you gonna do pharmacotherapy for the PTSD you're going to be getting basically an, S, uh, an antidepressant and it's not going to work as well as if you just go to therapy. And the therapy is also going to be covered. So maybe you should, you know, if you're suffering PTSD, go to therapy. And I have a therapist. My therapist says therapy works 80% of the time if one thing happens. Now, I haven't looked up this thing. I'm not sure if he's just telling me a whole bill of goods so I come back. I don't know. But he said if the patient likes his therapist, there's an 80% chance that that relation, that the symptoms will improve. So, uh, if you do have PTSD and you're a veteran, sorry, thank you for your service, uh, you may want to try therapy, and if you don't like your therapist, fire him, and then find one you do like, and if that's still not enough, because America likes one thing, I like it right now, and it's got to be fast, there's got to be a pill that I can take that will just fix everything. They never really think about how can I change my lifestyle habits so that it doesn't happen anymore. Maybe that's why therapy does work better than the drug maybe it's illustrating that but these are the drugs what are their side effects so I took Paxil looked up the, the uh, side effects for Paxil and what do we have we have a hodgepodge of really interesting and counterindicated somewhat when you think about it uh, things for example sleepiness drowsiness those are related tired feeling gotcha nervousness sleep problems dizziness nausea uh, skin rash headache Here's where they start to get contradictory. Diarrhea and constipation. So at least one side effect fixes the other. And then you get upset stomach, maybe also related to the other two. Then there's the weird ones like abnormal ejaculation. So you're like, wow, maybe I'll at least get abnormal ejaculation. You know, that'd be kind of fun. You know, let's get on some Paxil to see what that's like. But don't worry, it'll never happen because you're gonna be impotent have a decreased sex drive and difficulty having orgasms, so you'll never see what the abnormal ejaculation is anything. And then, interestingly enough, if that's if that's not a lot of fun, the next fun thing is that you're going to be on these for a long time, like a real long time, months, maybe years. When you try to get off of them, because maybe now you've gone to therapy and there's an 80% chance that your symptoms have improved, or you found something else that we're going to discuss right real quick. Cannabis. If you go to the VA's website, they have a whole page about cannabis and PTSD. And it says that there's no evidence that cannabis has any efficacy when it comes to treating PTSD. Why? Because there's been no study 
in the veteran population to determine how uh, cannabis has how effective cannabis is at treating PTSD. You want to know why? Because cannabis is a Schedule One substance, and there's only one type of research that it gets approved for: the research that shows why it's bad. That's it. Why would the government fund research that shows that cannabis works for PTSD? And does it actually work? But on that same VA webpage, a VA in, in plain text says cannabis may result in short-term reduction of PTSD, PTSD symptoms. Why? The endocannabinoid system. Because of the endocannabinoid system, there's a CB1 receptor in everybody's brains. And PTSD greatly impacts that, evidently. Again, I'm a lawyer, not a scientist. But that's what the science seems to say, and it's confirmed by the VA's own webpage that says that the CB1 receptors are damaged in PTSD, and cannabis assumes uh, cannabis hits those CB1 receptors. And then there's all sorts of different types of medical marijuana and different types of uh, cannabinoids, and we can go on and on. But I think it's very, very disingenuous, very disingenuous, that the government will, on one side, say that you, there's no studies, there's no evidence, it doesn't work. Scroll down the page. Actually, it probably works, but you can't because it's only short-term. It only has short-term effectiveness. We don't know what the long-term studies are. So even in the VA's website, we still have that federal policy that marijuana is bad, even though there's, there's, they're putting the science out there that says marijuana, because of the impact of PTSD on those CB1 receptors and cannabis having <laughs> cannabinoids, uh, it just, ooh. <laughs> You should do that a lot when you're looking at the federal laws. Again, I'm not a doctor, but doctors made something up. You want to know what they made up? Well, I'll tell you. Substance use disorders. Now, if you use cannabis, it's called cannabis use disorder. Same page from the VA. I tell you, I mean, they define new disorders, and then they just put the word cannabis on it and be like, see, you're sick. Why? Because you're using cannabis. Don't you know that that's a cannabis use disorder? Uh, it's a, if you have like disability or your failure to make responsibilities at work, home, or school. Well, uh, actually, cannabis has allowed me to meet those responsibilities. But why is why is it cannabis use disorder? Because it's illegal. If it wasn't federal, if it wasn't Schedule One substance, and now let's get into the law portion. There is a good chance that it wouldn't be cannabis use disorder. But DSM Five. I mean, I guess anything. Any substance can now be placed before use disorder. Oh my gosh. You know what this reminds me of? The use disorder by cannabis use. Okay, so there's jokes. So if you ever spill anything, like you're taking a drink and you just totally blow it and you, you spill all over your face, just say, oh man, my drinking problem's back. Or, you know, if you're eating ice cream uh, or, you know, anything and it gets either all over your face or it just falls on the ground, be like, ah, oh, my eating disorder. Now, granted, those are like legitimate diseases and you probably shouldn't be making fun of them. I don't care how bad the jokes are, but cannabis use disorder, are you kidding? Yeah, no, they're not, they're not. Um, they're, they're extremely unfunny people. <sighs> but it's a thing, evidently. Let's go to the next one. Laws broke if a VA approved medical marijuana. Now we're getting to the meats and potatoes. So you can go to another site that we pulled, it has to do from the Department of Justice. You go to Department of Justice and then they have a great doc about the drug offenses and the maximum sentences that you're gonna get. So you have a whole litany of laws that will be broken if the VA starts um, recommending or, or writing prescriptions for cannabis to its patients that are suffering from PTSD, including drug trafficking, racketeering, money laundering, regulatory offenses, simple possession, still a federal crime, and then those poor doctors are going to have to get hit by those double taxes coming from IRC 280E because they are trafficking in Schedule 1 substance, and then think of all the lawsuits out there, and I can actually hear the lawyers getting excited about this, because they can hear money. Lawyers can hear money. It's a very strange thing. But all these lawsuits that would be filed for violation of the standard of care. How dare this this doctor prescribe a Schedule One substance to a patient? Take his law. Oh wait, they don't call it a law license when you practice medicine. Take his medical license. 
Isn't that just freaking ridiculous? I do. I think it's freaking ridiculous. The reason why you're never going to get cannabis from the VA to treat your PTSD, even though they kind of admit on their own website that it works, is because it is a federal crime. And that federal, it's not just one federal crime. It's uh, six, eight, 12 federal crimes. They aren't going to commit federal crimes to get you medicine. And that really does suck. But a lot of states have PTSD as a qualifying condition for cannabis. And a lot of the cannabis businesses that I'm aware of do of great relationships with veterans. And they really do make sure that veterans can get their medicine so that they can hit their CB1 receptors, which have been damaged because of the trauma they went through. Anyway, thank you so much for joining us. I really, really appreciated asking the question. And if you really like this, you can click our subscribe button. Or if you would like to win a copy of Satan Smoke or USB Yerba, same book, we're kind of A-B testing it. Find us at facebook.com backslash free THC. The USB Yerba's version is actually available on Amazon. 